moving on, we have another uh, field that we haven't yet covered, uh, and that is getting uh, very, very popular in uh, in the tech industry today, and uh, also in Baltics. Uh, we're going to be talking about gaming, uh, and the talk will be about career shift to game design, practical advice, uh, and it's going to be by Yekaterina Bobolya, who is the game designer and team lead at East Tati Riga. Uh, a little bit about uh, about Yekaterina and her talk. Uh, making video games uh, is the dream Yekaterina chose to follow, despite having completely different education and professional background. Starting from zero over the course of the last six years, she worked on several mobile and virtual reality projects, uh, lectured a course on video game industry, co-founded a VR AR networking community, XR Latvia, and eventually la landed game designer slash team lead role at one of the most known local game development studios, East Tati Riga. And in her talk today, she will uh, share some practical advice uh, with where to start if you want to shift your career into uh, game development and uh, become a game designer. Let's give a warm welcome to Yekaterina. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming today. Um, Okay, so first of all, actually a question. Maybe people here who are interested in becoming game designers, could you please raise your hand? Anyone? Okay, there are a few. Okay, I hope then this presentation might actually help you. Um, so I would like to introduce uh, myself uh, a little bit so that you know why am I here and why am I talking about this. So my name is Kat. Um, that's, that's my long name, but nobody uses that. Like everyone just calls me Kate or Kat. Um, yes, and currently I am working as a game designer slash team lead at Estoti Riga, which, is, uh, which creates uh, world-known mobile games. Um, but of course, yeah, it wasn't, always wasn't like that. So uh, I played my first video game, uh, I think approximately back in 1995. And since then, I really, really enjoyed playing video games. And I personally, myself, like, I see video games as a form of art. They, like, they can be a form of art. Of course, not, not all of them. But uh, similarly, like films and books and theater, maybe sometimes these stories, these worlds and characters, they come alive. And the big difference with video games is that you can actually interact with these worlds and characters. And sometimes, or actually oftentimes, you are the main character in the story. So, in fact, even to this day, I still remember the specific game and the specific scene in that game that I played. And I realized, like, this is awesome. I would like to be a part of this. I would like to create, like, character stories and worlds like this. But even, even then, like, in in the 90s, um, I was a small child, but even then I realized that it's not really um, like a viable career option in Latvia. I thought that it was done somewhere far, far away, like in a different uh, part of the world. So I didn't really give it a serious thought. And so many, many years later, I got my master's degree in social sciences and I ended up working at the market intelligence company. And it took me a few years to realize that I was bored and unhappy and I didn't really want to do that. And the thing that I wanted to do was way more creative work. And then that was the point when I remembered about my interest in uh, game development. So thankfully it wasn't 1995 anymore and situation in Latvia had changed. And to my surprise, I discovered even an educational program and some companies that were actually working in the game development field, and I decided to start my journey in this area. And of course, I had to start from zero, but I did a lot of research. I spoke to people to find out more information, and it took me approximately six years to get to this role where I am now, and I feel like my journey is still not over. There's still a lot to learn. Um, but I wish that maybe someone could share like some tips uh, with me, like I am tr going to try to share some tips with you today when I was starting out so that this journey could be easier because honestly, so many things happened that I think I could actually write a book 
or I don't know, make like a short documentary of uh, all the struggles I've been through and also all the fun things that happened. But um, okay, so to start off, uh, I would like to answer this uh, big question, what do game designers do? Because um, from my experience, um, people usually confuse a uh, game designer job with um, art or code. So there's like a part of people who think that game designers are responsible for creating um, game art. Probably it's because of the word design in it. Um, and then there's a part of people who think that game designers are people who uh, program the game. But neither of these are actually true. And at the beginning, I was also a bit confused and I think like most of my friends who are not my colleagues are still kind of confused about what I do in my work. So um, to answer this question, game designer is a person who is responsible for coming up with ideas about the game. Um, they are responsible uh, for coming up with all kinds of content that is going to be in the game. The main features, what's going to happen, rules, what's the world, so game designer is the person who is responsible for the whole vision of the game. So they know everything that what, uh, what is going to happen in the game and what the game is essentially about. And so to, to define these things, you need to uh, remember about uh, several key elements. Uh, first of all, core loop, uh, which is a term that uh, defines like uh, uh, a set of basic actions, repeated actions. Uh, that player can do over and over again. And it is usually the core of the, of the game itself. So a simple example would be, um, let's say a player is exploring a map, this world in game world, and they encounter um, enemies. And so they need to fight the enemies, they need to combat them and survive so that they again can continue on exploring the world and you can understand how this creates a loop. And of course, uh, game loops like core loops can be way more complicated than that. This was a very basic example and they can layer on top of each other. Um, but this, like always, it's better to start simple and then expand on it. If you have a really good core loop, then most likely you will be able to build a really good game. So next is mechanics. And me game mechanic is a term which is uh, used basically to describe any kind of action that you can do in the game as a, as a player. So imagine walking, uh, running, jumping, even buying, selling, uh, talking, anything can be a game mechanic. Any verb that you can think of can be game mechanic. And so the last uh, key element would be a game system which is way more complicated term and not all games have um, very uh, big game systems. Um, but essentially, it is when you combine all of the things that you have put in your game, you combine them in a way so that all of these elements support each other um, in a way that they maintain this whole package and this whole package is your game. So to create a really good game system, you have to prepare to actually spend a lot of your time uh, in Excels, uh, flowcharts, um, talking with colleagues and your teammates uh, and just uh, writing messy stuff on whiteboards on in your sketchbooks. So um, this was a very big jump. Okay. Yeah. So now that we know all of these things, basic things, so this is where my advice comes in. And you saw a little bit of that already. So tip number one, actually a little bit counterintuitive, I wouldn't suggest you to start learning like programming or game art or whatever. Uh, the first tip is to actually play games. Play games like all kinds of genres, uh, play all like, uh, try to explore all kinds of platforms, uh, PC, consoles, uh, mobile, even board games, VR. It doesn't really matter unless you already have like a specific idea. Maybe you want to create a game of a specific genre or for a specific platform, then you should probably play a lot of games uh, that are of that kind. And why? This is because so that you need to uh, create like establish a library of ideas, of game ideas, game mechanics and core loops in your head. 
because you won't be able to come up with ideas uh, on your own by not knowing all of these things. So first tip uh, is, is very important. You just have to play games and play games a lot. And besides all that, nowadays it's very hard to come up with like a completely original game idea. So usually uh, combinations, like new combinations of already tried and true things are considered a novelty. But you might not know even what to combine if you haven't looked what is already out there. So play games. And then uh, tip number two is to study first time user experiences. So this, you can approach this uh, in two ways. Uh, maybe when you have played already games and you know maybe some really good games or you know that some really good games are gonna come out, then prepare yourself to follow the whole, uh, like the whole starting sequence of the game, step by step. If you want to study it, um, find like a dedicated notebook and maybe just write down this first time user experience step by step, like what happens when you press um, first button, second button, third button, what is going on in the game? And when you will do these, like several of these, you will soon start noticing some similarities between games. You will start noticing onboarding techniques and uh, that kind of stuff that will help you understand how players are engaged with the game. And these techniques you can later, uh, later use yourself in your own games. So after you have done that and you have an understanding of what a good game is or how to start it, or maybe you have like an idea, try to create a prototype or maybe just try to create a copy of a game that you have found, but that shouldn't be probably something highly complex. It should be something easy because you're just starting out. So for this purpose, you don't really need to like a program a game right away, not at all. You can use um, extensive paper sketches where you kind of like a sketch, like a wireframe of what's going to happen in each step. That might be very useful. Also, you can use a simple uh, cardboard and glue so that you could uh, even create like a simplistic version, like a board game version of your game because later on it can be digitalized anyway. Um, this is also a good uh, stage where you should start uh, exploring game engines because you will need to know that, at least how to operate in them. If you know someone else who already knows a game engine, maybe you can try asking for that person's help uh, to build your prototype. And you do not really need an artist at this point. Uh, the person who is familiar with the engine, they can build everything using just simple geometric forms or maybe some uh, images from the internet uh, that can be used as placeholders. You can later on improve on all of that. So after you have your prototype, you need to play test. You need to play your game over and over again yourself. But by this point, you might not be entirely objective anymore. So you need to find people who are not familiar with your game at all. And a good thing is to try people who do not play games. Like for example, your parents or grandparents. Just give them the game and do not explain anything. Let them try to play it. And if you see that, uh, for example, your parents or grandparents can already intuitively understand what you need to do, what they need to do in the game, it means you are on the right path because it is very important for people to intuitively understand what they have to do. Uh, on the contrary, if you see people struggling, then you should sit there by them quietly, take out your notebook or phone and just write down every single problem that they encounter because it is going to be important for you to look for solutions for these problems so that players do not encounter them. And it is important that you eliminate most of these problems uh, right away in your prototypes as early as possible because that will increase your chance of success later on. Also remember that prototyping phase is actually the cheapest phase, uh, like where the changes you are making are the cheapest because if you have developed already, if you are further along um, like your development path and the game is like half finished, then making changes at that point will be very expensive, time consuming, very frustrating. You should avoid that. So make changes in your prototype um, stage. So after you have done all of these things and you think you have like a very good first version of the game, 
then this is the point where you can start asking yourself very um, uncomfortable questions, let's say, about your game. Uh, these questions should be ad addressing, they should address uh, things that are not um, part of your planned gameplay. Because when you will be creating a game, uh, you will be kind of imagining how a person, how a player is going to go, uh, how, to s how they're going to start it, how they're going to finish it, how they're going to play it. But you will be surprised. People, players, they will not do like you imagined it. So it would be great if you could ask yourself questions like, for example, what is going to happen if the player is going to, let's say, go in a completely different direction di than I intended them to go? And so you have to ask yourself as many questions like this as possible. So early on, you can kind of eliminate all these loopholes. Of course, you need to find solutions for all these problems. And this way, you can eliminate all those loopholes that um, players can accidentally find and then subsequently break your game as a result of that. And you don't want that. So if you are going to think about all of these uncomfortable questions, find solutions, make sure that even if the player does something completely different than you expect them to, they will not break the game and it will not make their game experience really um, bad. So at this point, when you, let's say, have done this several times and you have a few um, decent prototypes, then this is the point where you can actually start thinking about maybe looking for some um, entry level game designer jobs because now you have a portfolio you can show something, you can show your process of thinking. And employers do not always really look for completely like finished games. What they uh, want to see, they want to see your way of thinking, the way how you come up with, with these ideas and if your core loops work and all of that stuff. So if you feel like by this point that this would be a path that you would like to pursue, so you can actually take it uh, even further. I would highly recommend you definitely to try and learn how to operate in the game engine. Uh, in Latvia, usually people mostly use Unity or Unreal Engine. Uh, in my experience, people mostly use Unity. So that would be something that uh, you should look into. And as a game designer, you don't need necessarily to know programming. You can also do a lot of things in uh, game engine without scripting. So. Another thing is that um, you can be a game designer just like a person who comes up with content and game systems and core loops, but usually good game designers uh, have at least one more additional skill set that they are good at. It can be art, like game art, 3D, 2D. Um, it can be UI. It can be uh, programming, uh, also story writing, audio, whatever. You can choose whatever you like but it will definitely complement your uh, game designer skills. Then, of course, if you plan to lead a game development team day by day, then project management and communication skills are super important. I cannot even stress enough how important is communication. Um, and then, uh, lastly, you definitely need to stay actively informed about the industry. Let's say, latest games, uh, newest trends, uh, maybe market reports, maybe some things that are related exactly to your platform or chosen genre. These things are very important for you to know the market, know your consumer. There are also good reports on uh, gamer behavior and maybe that will help you in some of your game design uh, decisions. So if that all sounds like too much work, and you don't want to do that, you don't want to invest your time, you can invest your money, and you can just hire a team instead. Of course, it will still be quite complicated process. Uh, from my experience also, it's a very lengthy process, very expensive process, but it is just, it comes down to your choice. So no matter what you do, if you are the person behind the idea, and if you are the game designer of this game that you have planned, there will be challenges, and these are uh, three main challenges that I personally have noticed. Um, first of all, that you need to see the big picture as early as possible. When you have the game, uh, the game idea, then you need to already think about 
how your game is going to start, how is it going to finish, and what's going to happen in between so that the, uh, the gameplay goes from start to finish. It is not that easy. Then uh, secondly, after you have crystallized your vision about this, you need to not to forget about it. It's very easy to forget about the, the big picture, especially when there are a lot of interesting details like um, rabbit holes that you can uh, you know, dig deep and uh, just spend a lot of time on unnecessary details that will not impact the result of your game. And so these two things are already very hard to do, but leading the development team and communicating with your development team in a way so that they also understand the vision and the end goal of the game, it's even harder. You need to constantly talk with people. You need to constantly check in that you are all on the same page because very often you will find yourself in a situation where you thought that all of you agreed on the same thing, but people start working and you see that the results are completely different and then you start talking to them and you realize that they imagined it in their head completely differently than you did. So it might seem like a bit too, uh, too repetitive at times, but you know, better be, um, better be sure that you're all going in the right direction. So how to, not, uh, how to stay sane actually doing all of this because it sounds like juggling too many things at the same time. It's just not coming up with a groundbreaking idea and then just, you know, everyone will do it and make it to the amazing result. So these would be like my final tips that I also um, found very useful in my work. Um, first of all, approach uh, game development as a job. Uh, if you think that you might want to uh, work in game development because you enjoy playing games, then you should probably reconsider uh, because as, uh, as in any area where you need to create like a finished product, uh, game design often can be quite frustrating and you need to understand and need to know that you are actually committing to this career for the right reasons. Because in the end, if you create really good result, it's also very, very rewarding, but be ready for, for some uh, frustration in the middle. The second tip would be uh, avoid creating unhealthy emotional attachments to your amazing game ideas. Um, avoid the situations where you spend, you know, like months and years working on this one idea because you think it's the one and you never test it with other people, you never talk about it. Um, it's, a, it's a big mistake and if you do this, it will probably break you. So better try approaching this, that this is your opportunity to try as many game ideas as possible. And if something doesn't work, then you have to be able to mo move on quickly. And the uh, last one is about finding balance. So usually when uh, I myself and I, when I talk to people, they uh, sometimes like they have this very uh, grand big idea about the game that they would like to do, like their life's work or masterpiece. But I've heard that people say that making a game that you would like to play or something that you would like to put out there is a big mistake. Uh, because people might not want to play it. So if you want to fulfill like your creative ambitions and earn some money meanwhile as well, then you have to find the balance between what you want to create and what people would like to play, like the golden middle. So yeah, <laughs> basically that would be all my advice. Um, you can, I think we have time for questions, but if in case anyone wants uh, maybe some specific uh, advice, because I glossed over like a very big field and honestly, there's like a lot, lot more uh, behind it all. If you want maybe some specific advice about anything. So feel free to contact me on my socials or through my email. So thank you.